Okay, so let's carry on the conversation that we've started about website success and the factors that are really critical to having a successful website, which are traffic and conversion rate. And I'm going to introduce to you the concept of multiplicity. So as we've already seen, a lot of websites today try to get one page to do lots of different things. So you end up with a Swiss Army Knife page that tries to be scissors, saw, knife, pliers, screwdriver. And it does all of those things a little bit, but it does none of those things with much strength or conviction. So the principle that we're going to be talking about is multiplicity. And that essentially means that you break apart all of those different things that you're trying to be, all those different things that you're trying to say, and you break them into separate pages. So you end up with multiple pages, each of which is focused on a particular thing. So instead of having a Swiss Army Knife page, you have a knife page and a saw page and a screwdriver page. And that brings a lot of benefits to any website. First of all, when you've got people who are looking for screwdriver, they're no, never going to be a good match with a page that says screwdriver, pliers, knife and everything else. So if you have 12 different pages, each of which is focused on a particular issue, then people who are looking for that issue will be more likely to find that particular page than they will be to find your Swiss Army Knife page that tries to do so many things. So having more pages gives you more chance to attract more traffic to your website. And that gives your website breadth. In later weeks we're also going to address how multiplicity can let you address markets in greater depth as well. Let's say that you're at this party and two of the people that you speak to could benefit from your e-commerce offering. Let's say you specialize in doing e-commerce sites. Now, one of those people is quite familiar with e-commerce. They've done some research. They know about different platforms. They've spoken to a few different providers. And when they speak to you, they're going to find out why you are the right person to help them, what benefits you can offer them. The second person just has a regular bricks and mortar store and they've never really thought seriously about whether they could sell their products online as well. Now, both of those people could end up being an e-commerce customer of yours. They could both end up using the same service, but their awareness of their own needs and their own choices are very, very different. And multiplicity, as we're going to see later, will also help you address them. When you've got a page that talks specifically to a person's need, then that page is going to get their attention. And getting attention is the first step to achieving a conversion. If somebody's doing a search for, I need a good local web designer in my area, and they find a page saying, I am the local web designer for your area, then that's a page that's really targeted at their needs. It's a page that's doing a particular thing. It's saying, I am the web designer for this particular area. And somebody who's looking for that is going to be finding what they want. If you put up a website that says web designer, then it's not going to be a good match for somebody who's got a particular specific need. So even if they do find your page, if it's one of the many that they click on and they look at it, they're not going to see exactly what they're looking for. They're going to see a bit of what they're looking for. So your web page will be targeting that person better. It's going to get their attention. It's going to get their interest. It's going to get them excited and get them to want to speak to you. Now, because multiplicity is about having many pages, you could have one page that says, I'm the web designer for this town. And also, I'm the web designer for this county as well, or this particular area, you can have multiple different conversations, but because each of those conversations is targeted at a specific market, when any of those people come in through that particular landing page, then all of them are going to get a much better idea that they've found what they want than if any of them found your Swiss Army Knife page that tries to do lots of things together and none of them very well. And all of that also leads to more conversions. 
So today, specifically, we're going to look at traffic and how multiplicity, the approach of multiplicity, multiple landing pages, can get you more traffic. So I'm going to give you a quick overview of search engine optimization. This is one of the big strands of the course. We're going to learn an awful lot more about it. So if you put yourself in the position of Google, when somebody does a search on Google and they search for web designer Cambridge, then Google's job is to look in its massive index of billions and billions of pages. And what's it trying to do? It's trying to f organize any results that talk about web and design and Cambridge into a list. And the number one result on that list is the page that Google thinks is the most about web designer Cambridge. The second one is the one that's next most about web designer Cambridge. And Google uses two factors to establish how much a page is about a certain topic. The first factor is, what does the page say it's about? So Google will look at the contents of the page, and if the content of the page says, I am very much about Web Designer Cambridge, then Google will understand that that page is about that subject. The second factor is, what does the rest of the world say that web page is about. And this is the big innovation that Google added to the search engine technology. Before that point, pretty much search engines just looked at what does the page say it's about. So it was quite easy to fool the search engine into thinking that your page was particularly about something. What Google said is that, well, why don't we use this kind of social proof? Why don't we say how many other pages link to this page? and how, how many of those pages say that that page is about the same subject. And when you've got a page that says it's about something and you've got lots of other pages that link to it, and those links also say it's about something. Say, for example, you know, talk to this guy. He is a great web designer in Cambridge, and that's the text of the link. That's what you click on. Then Google says, well, that's a vote from somebody else to say what this page is about. And that's how they compute the relevance of a page. Now, what the page itself says it's about is only worth about roughly 10% of the relevance. It's a minor factor. What the rest of the world says a page is about is a much more important factor. So the first question is, what do you want to rank for? So before you create any web page, you should know this page is going for this particular traffic if it is a landing page, not all pages are landing pages. Contact Us doesn't necessarily need to be reaching out to a particular kind of traffic. Um, but any landing pages that you've got, the definition of a landing page is that it's trying to address a particular market. So the first question is, what do you want to rank for? And the tool that we'll use for that is called Keyword Research. And we're going to do a lot of keyword practice, guys. Um, we're going to go into that in, in great depth. I'm going to show, share with you some tools. I'm going to show you exactly how to use them. The purpose of keyword research is to identify a set of keywords or a phrase for every page that will give you the best traffic. And we're looking at three factors when we do that. The first factor is it has to be relevant. There's no point attracting traffic for a page when those people are looking for something else because they're not going to want to look further. They're not going to convert. They're not going to carry on the conversation with you. They're going to go away. So the traffic has got to be relevant. You've got to find people who are looking for what the page offers. So as the more relevance, the better. You also want terms that a lot of people are searching on. This is all about search engines. So keyword research techniques and the software that we'll be using will show you this is how many people have been searching for this term in the past month, year, day, whatever. So you want to find terms that quite a lot of people are looking for because that's going to bring you traffic. The other thing is that you want pages for which there is relatively low competition. If you try and compete for web designer you're going to have a very hard job to get near the top of the rankings, which is very important, as we'll see in a second. So what you want to do is you want to find terms that are relevant, 
that will give you a relatively good amount of traffic but for which you're competing against relatively low competition. And we'll go into this again in a lot more detail. So here's why ranking is so, so important. This graph kind of shows you how many clicks or what percentage of the clicks go to which positions on the search engine. Now, on average, the number one position on Google will get you about 40% of all the clicks for that search. If somebody searches for web designer, the number one result for web designer will get about 40% of those clicks. Number two result gets about 25, number three goes down and so on. Now the first 10 results on here, as you can see, account for about 99% of all the clicks. Page one accounts for 99% of all clicks from search results. And then some people go on to page two, some people you know, eventually go on to page 10. But really there, you're talking about very, very small change. So if you want to get good traffic for anything, you've got to be on page one for that term. This is why it's very important to take competition into account. Because for web designer, there'll be millions of pages that mention web designer. And if you can get onto page 50 for web designer, then you're going to get absolutely no traffic at all. Even though millions of people might be searching for it, most of those millions are clicking on the top 10 results and only a few will trickle down to you, down at page 50 or wherever you are. So what you've got there is you've got a huge pie and you're only going to get one crumb from that pie. It doesn't matter how big the pie is, you're only getting a crumb. It's much better to get a big slice of a small pie. So if you can be at number one, for a particular search, even though there are fewer people searching on it, it's a small pie. If you get 40% of that pie, it's going to be a lot more than the crumb that you get from the giant pie. Here's something else that's very interesting, which is to ask, where does traffic actually come from? And this really, really boosts the argument for multiplicity. See, a lot of us will tend to think, well, people will come in through our homepage we like to think that it's like a restaurant. People come in through the front door, they sit down, they look at the menu, they choose what they want and they place their order and then they go. But that's not how it happens. It's much more random than that. Really from, from websites, what attracts people is content and the content will, will be spread all over the website. So it's likely that a minority of people will come through your homepage and a minority of people will be finding you using the terms that you think they'll find you. Now, the chart on this page is part of some analysis that I did of all the traffic to Web Design from Scratch, and it shows you the most popular 20 keywords. Now, Web 2.0 Design is the, was the most popular keyword over that year. It got 3,409 people searched on that term. Then Web Design was second with less than half of that traffic. Then CSS Block, and it goes down and down and down and down. Now, where do you think this website gets half of its traffic from? Do you think that these top 20 terms give web design from scratch half of its traffic? Or maybe it's the top 50? Or maybe the top 100 terms will give you half of your traffic? I was very, very surprised when I actually did the analysis to find that I, didn't, I couldn't even get down to 50% mark. This is a graph that shows the amount of traffic that we got over a year. So I think the, the previous one was actually for only a month. This is the year's results. The number one top term gave our website nearly 40,000 searches, nearly 40,000 visitors from Web 2.0 Design, and then it drops down. So these, the top 20 or so will give us you know, well over a 1,000 terms, maybe more than that. But the orange area of this graph that you can see, in fact, everything that you can see on this graph isn't even half of the traffic for the website. It's amazing. I went down to the top 500th, I went to the 500th term, and the top 500 terms add up all that traffic together, accounted for less than 45% of the traffic. So what does that mean? Well, you see the area that I've indicated with the long tail that's when the traffic goes down to three, two, ones, and then carries on at ones. 
Okay. Now the long tail is very, 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 very long. The long tail is where all the traffic for your website will come from. So you'll have maybe a major term, web design, web design tutorial, web design Cambridge that you might want to go for. But most of your traffic isn't going to come through that exact term. Most of your traffic will come from other combinations of words that are on your website that happen to match what people are searching for because most people are not searching for web designer Cambridge. They're searching for things like I need to find a web designer near blah. They're searching for a huge, huge range of different phrases and the more content your website has, the more different pages your website presents that focus on different things, the more chance you'll get at getting that really nice long tail which will get you lots and lots of traffic. So I hope this has started to show you how the approach of multiplicity of having more pages that do different things instead of one page that tries to do a lot is really going to help you get a lot more traffic. So we're going to go over this a lot, lot more over the coming weeks.